started my career in the orchestra when I was 18, I think I was just doing, and that was a professional full-time orchestra, but it was an international group, which was 1990, still Soviet Union, it was a very unique thing. It was a chamber orchestra called Ensemble 21. Uh, so I did maybe a year and a half there, then I went to Bolshoi Opera, so I was working with them pretty much maybe four or five times a week. And then I, um, in February 1992, I was invited to join uh, the Moscow Soloist Chamber Orchestra under the uh, direction of world-famous viola player of the time, Yuri Bashmet. And uh, so I was working there as principal bass for next almost 13 years. Is there a, do you feel there's a, a better route for musicians in Russia than there is, say, in the UK? I think that uh, every person, first of all, uh, we all have to teach ourselves in a way. So it's not like, you know, there is your teacher there, pesters you and you do whatever they say and then you become better. No, it's uh, primarily your own interest and it's you yourself that practice at home. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can end up in, a, in an English conservatoire mm -hmm. and if you don't do anything, you're not gonna get anywhere. I think it's still pretty much down to, you know, every individual. The, uh, the one thing that I might just uh, sort of emphasize is that generally, as far as technical skills are concerned, uh, the level in Russia uh, has always been fairly good, more serious. I mean, once again, without discriminating, because uh, anywhere else there are really good players and some teachers are really devote attention to, uh, to this aspect. But still I find that in Russia it was a little bit more thorough. That was at least my impression. Are there more opportunities in Russia or do you have to come to the West? To, to no, there have been always many opportunities, but I mean, if you graduate as a classical player, uh, you have basically, well, like everywhere else, you have few uh, choices. You can become an orchestra musician, you can uh, teach, but this isn't enough to survive, to be honest. You know, so many people, they would be uh, orchestra musicians and teach, or you can become eventually a soloist mm -hmm. and maybe also teach. But, uh, you know, one of the problems, so to speak, of the education in Russia has always been uh, that it was very much centered on making people become soloists. And this is not quite right attitude because most of uh, them will become orchestra musicians. So you had uh, obviously a very successful career as a professional classical musician. What made you move to jazz? Uh, yeah, you know, jazz has been always, uh, I've always been keenly interested in this. And maybe also thanks to my dad who would make me listen to some records. Uh, thanks to the fact that my primary interest was lying in the field of music composition. But gradually this interest started to take over, uh, take over, take over, and I uh, remember uh, one occurrence, uh, us performing a concert with the Moscow Solace at the Carnegie Hall in New York, and uh, I was sitting there in this fantastic venue and thinking, feeling that I was uh, occupying a seat of someone else. Yeah, that I was like, you know, being dishonest uh, to myself and uh, that was one of these alarms, you know. And then you think, okay, uh, it's like now or never. But I remember, I remember very well uh, how I for the first time ever composed a song, a jazz song, and I was really surprised. I was like, wow, so I can actually write the song? That's really <laughs> strange. It was very much influenced by Crystal Silence of Chick Corea, but, but nonetheless, I was very surprised. That's, you know, it was just progressing, progressing. The compositions that you've done have, have been released in albums over yeah. the years. Um, yeah. And you've got one coming out shortly. So what's the inspiration for that particular album? Oh, well, poof. 
you know, that's a good question. Uh, every now and again, you feel like it's time to release a new album with uh, some originals of yours, some ideas, and to, uh, you know, make this kind of snapshot of the current state of affairs mm -hmm. in your own professional life. And over your years as a musician, you, you've received a number of, of highly acclaimed awards, but I think probably the one you must be most proud of is the Honored Musician of the Russian Federation. Honored Artist of the Russian Federation. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, the, the, uh, the thing is that, uh, well, it came, uh, came out as a total surprise and I remember I was just at home in Moscow and a friend of mine rung me up and goes like, oh, congratulations. I was like, well, what with? Oh, honor it, uh, honor it, or whatever. And I was like, is this the, has the orchestra been awarded? Because my first thought was that the orchestra, you, uh, orchestra can also be awarded. No, no, uh, you, me, really? Okay, well, thanks. <laughs> then half an hour later, I get another call from someone else saying so. And uh, then they say, yeah, but that's in the, you know, um, there is a newspaper. Uh, that publishes all these sort of awards. Yeah, but that's in the newspaper. And I was like curious. Okay, I'm gonna go downstairs and buy a newspaper. And I really saw my name. It was oh, that's that's interesting. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, that I was only 30 years old, which makes me the youngest uh, double bass player to be awarded this ever in the history of USSR and Russia. But you know, some nice surprises sometimes happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, we look forward to listening to your new album and, and hopefully seeing you live at some of the events that Absolutely. you're appearing in. And, uh, uh, and thanks again for joining us on Burnport. Thank you. Thank you very much.